When it comes to streaming, gaming, esports, and business, one woman stands above the rest. Welcome to Streamer Class, your number one source for everything streaming. Listen to compelling guest interviews about starting and growing a successful channel and turning your passion for content into a career. Now, here's your host, a two-time partner Twitch streamer, owner and director of Evasion GG, and overall non-half-asser, Sigma. Welcome to Streamer Class. My name is Sigma, and today we are speaking with some high-level Twitch and YouTube moderators. We are going to discuss everything from how they became a moderator, what they recommend for others wanting to get into the field, how to best serve a community, and what streamers starting out should know. We're also going to cover some topics like tools of the trade, craziest moments, and much more. Some of these questions came from the Streamer Class Discord, and that link is down below if you are interested in joining. Today, we have Van, Van Arambion, or, uh, you know, the long name, we all call him Van around here. He actually mods for myself, Robin, Denticles, Dottie Hack, and Sensei Scav. We have Brian Baru with us, which you guys would all know from Evasion, Modding for Athos, Miss Dunk, Razzledis, and Trent AU. And then we have Bloody Rhett or Chris, as we're going to refer to him. And he mods for Phantom Lord, Dingle Derper, Kriparian, and Underflower. Now, Chris, you have actually been the longest mod here. The other two started in 2018, but you've been around since 2011. So I'm going to give you the floor and let you go ahead and introduce yourself. And then we'll talk to Van and Brian. All right. Sounds good. So I've been around since the uh, Justin.tv days. Um, I started, I actually started streaming back in 2007. And I actually, streaming is quite a bit of fun, uh, but I actually enjoyed moderating, oddly more fun to, that, to me. And uh, basically I got into it uh, by accident. Uh, Phantom Lord, you know, I got, I was in a stream all the time and Phantom Lord messaged me and was like, hey, would you like to be a moderator? And yeah, absolutely. So I became, it just, that's literally just how it happened. I just became a moderator. And then as time progressed, I kept meeting more and more people through uh, actually mostly Twitter. And I've been moderating since 2011 because of it. And I moderate pretty much every day. Awesome. Well, we're, we're happy to have you. I know that you have some stories to share and you've definitely been around the block. So I think people will be very interested to hear your story. Uh, Van? Why don't you go ahead and take it away? Uh, my name's Van. Um, I've been moderating since 2016, actually. Uh, I moderated for, uh, well, she's primarily a Dota streamer, or was. Um, and it just, I just kind of fell into it. You know, it was one of those communities where, you know, you show up in the channel and the mods dogpile, you know, waves and hellos and welcome and all this stuff and it was just one of those things like i came in it felt like i high-fived the whole mod team on the way in and on the way out and um and then she just asked one day hey do you want to do you want to be a mod and i was like yeah sure uh what is that <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so you know it's just one of those things that i you know have slowly grown into um found Sigma in 2018, I guess. And all the other people on the list at, at various points after that. So, um, yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a wild ride and, uh, it's actually been a lot of fun, especially with, you know, the, the world being the way it is and, you know, all the, the COVID stuff, I was perfectly positioned to, not really change much about my life. <laughs> we went to quarantine. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, we are happy to have you here. I uh, am very grateful. I knew if I asked, you would say yes, but you know, I had to have you on the first one for sure. Um, Brian, what about you? Hi, I'm Brian Baru or the Brian Baru. If you're on Twitch, uh, I started on Twitch around 2016. I found it. Actually, believe it or not, through a live poker player that I was a fan of and started in that world. But, you know, I was a gamer since I've been 
and single digits in age. So very quickly started checking out what else Twitch had to offer. And uh, a couple of the channels uh, for PUBG players that I frequented, they uh, they got to know me and had a few big events. They needed a, a guy and gave me a sword without me even knowing what the heck it was. And then once I started meeting some more serious streamers who uh, streamed as a career and not as a means to show their competition, that's when I started to really try to figure out how can I do this and not embarrass myself or others and been learning ever since. That's awesome to have you. And if you guys don't know, Brian has been a huge part of evasion as well behind the scenes. Uh, you may not always know it, but most of the stuff that you see, he has helped me um, create or uh, especially the Google Docs. He's kind of our, our Google whiz behind the scenes of evasion and keeps everything super organized. So happy to have him here as well. So the first question that I ask everybody is, where did your name come from? I do this with the streamers. I do this with everyone because I always find it very interesting. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to go down the list that I have. And then after this, it's going to be kind of just like a, a round table. We're just going to be BSing and talking. So Van, I'm going to let you take this one away. Oh, Lord. So way back when when Sigma was just a wee lass and... <laughs> The only, the only two people were the oldest men, you know, Brian and I, um, on the internet. Uh, there was a game called Nation States, and it still exists as far as I know. Um, but basically, you had a nation, and you logged into the website, every, you know, every day, you'd get an issue. And this is super, super government nerdy, which, hey, I'm a lawyer. All makes sense. Um, but you logged in, you, you got the issue, you got to decide, you know, how the issue turned out. And then that affected the course of your nation. Um, that was something nerdy that I did. And this was back in 1998, I think. Um, but when you first log in, you need a name for your nation. And I was not a creative person. Um, so I didn't know let's look up a name generator, you know? So I Googled name generator and the first thing that popped up was Elvish name generator. And I was like, yep, good enough. So I threw in, I think you had to put your name in or something like that. So I put my name in and it, it generated a, a, a name, gen, you know, a generated Elvish name. So apparently this is an Elvish name. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And then obviously everybody calls you Van for short. I think even back in the day when I met you, some people were saying Vanna and you're just like, whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's just, I get it. It's hard to pronounce, but <laughs> yeah, it's most people call me Van. Um, some people call me Vanna and then there's a few that call me Vanar for whatever reason. It's always entertaining when we go into a new stream and somebody tries to say your name. I think we all get a good <laughs> chuckle out of it. <laughs> it is one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, before before I knew him, Van was Vanna Rama 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 to me. I just I didn't remember how the rest of the name went. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, all right, Chris, what about you? So bloody bloody ret, but I know in Discord it says bloody retribute. So where did your name come from? Yeah, so this is an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> it was not my original Twitch name. Uh, I I think my original Twitch name uh, yeah, my original Twitch name was uh, Mr. Madman. Uh, CB, so my first and last name initials. And then I like the term uh, bloody retribution. I know that sounds morbid in, in some cases, but uh, I liked that name. I liked the way it sounded, you know, like you'd be feared. And I used to gamble a lot uh, online, and uh, which, by the way, I do not promote. Um, it, it, it's hard. It's a, a text-based game, and I put my name into that game. I, I rebranded myself in that game and put my name in there. And people were like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, his name is so fearful. We got to stay away from him kind of thing. I was like, oh, perfect. And that just kind of stuck. Like, it, you know, when you hear... But unfortunately, you can't put Bloody Retribution as a name in uh, in Twitch. So I had to shorten it. So I just went to Bloody Ret, which is kind of different because you don't going to see somebody have a name like that. And that's actually how my name got started. So do a lot of people just call you Ret then? Because that was uh, my first instinct. Yeah, everyone calls me Ret. As soon as I got you know, uh, involved... And, and everything people just kept calling me red and i was like okay gotcha gotcha so brian where did where'd your name come from well i had my 
my online days uh <laughs> playing video games uh you know on xbox live and other things like that and i had some pretty silly names and none of the names that i want to represent me on the internet and when i got to twitch i felt like this is a little more on the internet than in a game and i really didn't want to have any of those embarrassing younger days names i really needed something quick and easy and Brian Baru, who actually is the name of an 8th century king from Ireland, was actually who I was named after. And uh, my mom, my family, a lot of my closer friends, they've always called me Brian Baru. So I, was just, I would just go with Brian Baru. You know, it's, it's easy enough. It's me. And uh, Brian Baru was taken by an account that's still, even back then, and still inactive, but it was taken. And so I took the Brian Baru because I'm me. I'm the one whatever self-importance <laughs> but yeah i mean there there are times i actually regret it because you know i mean bumping into and now being friends with multiple uh streamers from ireland i'm like you know i don't like having <laughs> the name of actual historical figures from another country but no one would know me if i ever change it like at this point it's my brand uh, at least in the sense of twitch circle so i'm keeping it for now yeah yeah for sure i think everybody gets a little confused anytime we uh, see somebody that changes their name I know it throws me off for a really long time to be honest so I, yes, I think I you have think. to <laughs> well yeah that I mean it's still my twitch name but you know once I, I mean not my twitch my twitter name but once I was able to change it on twitch and request just sigma and it wasn't taken I had to I had to go for it so yeah um so I do have questions here that obviously you guys have have seen but I think that you guys already kind of explained how you got into modding. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip over that. And we'll move into something that this was directly asked in streamer class. And it was, what are some of the things that streamers have done for you or that they could do to make modding easier? I know it's kind of an open-ended question because you can go both ways with it. But, uh, you know, feel free to, to take it away because I feel like there's a lot of streamers out there that don't know what to do for their mods. Yeah, I'll, I'll get started on that. Okay. Um, so it's, what streamers have done for me? That's it, uh, it's a good question. So streaming is, is as everyone knows, is not easy. It, it, it's fun, but it's not easy. It's very hard to get into. It's very hard to get involved in. And what streamers have done for you, like, it depends. So as a moderator, what streamers have done for me, they give me, like, say I go home, like, you know what? I get to moderate today. So you get, you know, you get that, that you, you're at work, you're like, oh, you know, he's going to be online or she's going to be online. I'm like, yeah, you know, I get to moderate for that person today. So it's kind of a sense of you're involved in that schedule with them. So you feel like you kind of belong, if that makes sense. And um, to make, make modding easier, you know, it, it, talk, to, like, talk to your moderator. Don't just be like, okay, your moderators are here. Hey, good night. See you later. You know, have a, have a Discord, have a chat after, have a chat before. Um, just kind of, you know, always keep in constant contact with your... Oh, and my kids have joined me. And, um... Sorry, my kid distracted me. <laughs> it's all good. And so, to make it easier, I think that streamers uh, themselves need to be in, in contact with their moderators so that they kind of feel like they're always a part of the stream. Because if you're moderating for someone and you're... And you, but you kind of don't know what's going on. Are you really a part of the stream? Uh, that's just my opinion on that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The communication, I, uh, Brian and Van know my communication skills can just be absolute shit in general. Uh, you know, I've said something to myself in my head 60 times. I mentioned it to my husband, Hotel, who's very involved in, in everything that I do. Um, and then maybe one other person, and I, and then in my head, I think, well, I've said it a bunch everybody must know and it, it just doesn't make sense i have to work on my communication so i think that's really good advice to be honest is communicate with your mods uh brian van yeah that that was actually um the two notes that i put down two things that streamers have done for me to make modding easier for me were enabling me to mod um letting me know what their boundaries are and then actually giving me um the ability to coordinate and work with them like um for me you can never plan for every scenario but if you give them an understanding of what you will and will not tolerate that's important you know um 
uh, I only just recently started battle mod uh, battle modding. Well, look at me, I'm an aviation <laughs> guy. I only I only very recently started channel modding for Miss Dunk, and she was very quick to be like, "Hey, here is my parameters. Here's what's tolerable to me, and here's what's not. And here's a couple examples of people that pushed the barrier and people that broke that barrier. And I'm not going to be okay with this." but we can okay, be okay with this given circumstances. You know, like it really helped. And I thought it was more than many people have done for me because I was like, wow, okay, that that makes it plain for me. Um, giving giving me a, not me, but mod, mods a, a voice channel to coordinate in or chat to coordinate in, um, giving them access to chat bots to make commands so that they and the streamer don't have to repeat themselves really does make things easier. Um, if you, you know, if you have a, a new game that you're playing, and everyone's asking you, well, what was your build or what, what are you focusing on? What background did, you know, little things like that. You can just come up with a command like character. And now you have all the questions you keep getting every 10 minutes answered in a command. Now my job is easier. Your chat is smoother and we can keep moving, you know, um, little things like that. So enabling your mods and, and communicating with your mods are two things that I think are really important. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. There, there are th some things, and Sigma knows, um, there are certain things that drive me nuts that I really want to, you know, smack people in chat for that are okay with her. And that goes the same with each of the streamers that, you know, that I mod for. Everybody has their own tolerances on various, you know, topics of conversation or um, level of backseating or whatever it is. So I, I totally agree with that. Um, I take it. Put, to put more of a point on the one that I uh, that I had thought of was access. Um, once you find a good mod, and granted, day one mods are not going to be um, you know quote unquote good for these purposes. But once you find a good mod or a mod team, um, give them the access that they need to do the job. Um, and that's not just like oh well they'll they probably aren't going to need this. Give them the access to it anyway. You know stream elements, give them access. Um, whatever that access level is to do the job that you want them to do. Um, Cause there's, it, it's not going to be the, the average stream where, you know, things are going as well as they can go. It's when you get raided by somebody or there's a, uh, you know, a follow bot attack or something like that. When, you know, when stuff's burning down, you need to have somebody who can handle it. So give them the access that they need to be able to handle the worst situation that, that you can think of popping up. Um, or to, to fix what, like if you like to change your, your BTTV emotes around and you, you're not gonna have time to do that while you're streaming. It's just not gonna happen. You're doing 47 things at once. Your brain is going in 17 different directions. You can say, hey, you know, mod team, uh, put this emote into the BTTV stuff. Somebody has to have access to do that. You have to have editor roles. You have to have whatever, you know, whatever permissions are required. So make sure that they have those. It's a, it's a, a planning thing before you go live. You know, do I have the people there that are going to help me? And do they have the tools that they need to be successful? Let me, let me ask this because I know what my answer is, but what is your answer to this question? What is your favorite um, bot for chat. At this point, I would say Stream Elements' chat bot is probably the best, I, in my opinion. I find it to be the easiest. Um, the fact that you have a website and the commands you can use makes it a lot easier to choose. Uh, you know, there are times where chat is really running and you don't want to uh, clutter up chat with more in chat commands to update things. You could do it right through Stream Elements if you have access. And it makes it a lot easier. So I think that that personally is the best one right now for, for general use. I, I personally agree. I like stream elements. I recommend it like crazy. I've seen so many of the other bots and some of them are good. I, I like Nightbot. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use for when they're doing their um, like community nights for being able to sign up for things. But overall, I think st personally stream elements takes the cake. My favorite yeah. is Nightbot because he has, he's, he's old and he has no chill whatsoever. <laughs> which is, reminds me a lot of me. So no, I, I'm, I'm joking. My, so I, I like stream elements as well. If I had to pick something different than that, I'd say Moobot. Just a lot of functionality there and um, you can get a lot done with Moobot. 
Yeah, I, I recently just moved over two stream elements, uh, so I know exactly what you're talking about there. Um, I I was using Nightbot for a while, I just didn't like it. So I, I made over I made the switch over to stream elements when I kind of rebranded the channel, and I, I was pleasantly surprised about how easy and how how good it was, you know. And so yeah, I have to agree. Stream elements is probably number one. Yeah, yeah. So tip out there, make sure you have stream elements enabled on your as your chat bot your mods will thank you for sure um this question actually comes up a lot to me people will write and they'll say uh sigma you know i'm i'm not seeing uh consistency uh from my numbers and and this that and the other thing and i always ask about their schedule now this is definitely a parent thing uh do as i say not as i do because uh as you guys know i have evasion and i have this streamer class um and i do have all these kids so i i get very distracted and busy i do try to put out a schedule when i can but i would say if your numbers are dipping or you're having any issues the first question i ask is what is your schedule is it important from the mod side that your streamer sticks to a schedule because sometimes there's big mod or big streamers excuse me out there that kind of just jump on whenever the hell they feel like it and they're fine you know a couple thousand people will come in immediately uh, but then there's others that struggle and they have to make sure that they stick to a schedule. And if they're not on that schedule, their chat gets kind of peeved. So how do you guys view it? I'll jump in first on this one. Um, my my initial response to this question is yes, absolutely. It's important that you that streamers stick to a schedule. But I, it's not... It's not critical. You just have to do things a different way if you're not going to stick to a schedule. Um, so being the lawyer, there's like 17 caveats to this. So um, if you're it, so for, for most people, you're starting up your stream or your stream is, is you know, you just got an affiliate, you're working toward affiliate, you know, you're you're not really ready to push to partner or whatever. Um, the easy route is to have a schedule stick to it, publish it, make sure your mods know so that they know when to show up because you can't mod if you're not there. Um, so that's the easy answer. The If you're not going to skip to stick to a schedule, maybe you have a schedule, you know, you're on call all the time or you have four kids or you have, you know, 17 projects and three discords and you're partnered twice. And, you know, I, I don't know who I'm describing here, but, um, <laughs> um <laughs> um then you have to think about growing your mod team because if you're not going to have a consistent schedule that they can know when to show up then you have to pepper them wide enough that whenever you get on somebody will be on so i would say for that um for that scenario and that's going to be a rare scenario that you're going to be able to be successful doing that you, you got to cover it one way or the other. You got to have to have, have to either have a large mod team or stick to a schedule. I would say. I would hope that anyone that would be coming in to check out streamer class podcast and other resources for being a good streamer and growing your channel has heard by now and understands and agrees that consistency helps growth and repeat visitors. Um, uh, but unplanned streams also have that fun thing of being seen by people who may not normally be able to see you, right? Uh, and there's a benefit to that. Maybe you'll find out a different time timeline actually benefits you for better growth. But I agree with Van. Um, if you're changing your time up and you don't have mods there, you can actually end up giving a bad impression because your chat is not moderated and all kinds of things are happening and you're not able to game now because you've got a mod and... Having a team that is uh, dynamic, you know, maybe peppered around like like band put is a good term uh, with enough people. Um, but it also depends on the size and the makeup of your community too. You know, um, either way, having a head mod or, or head mods that are there that are able to do enough admin level things like Bitbot or, you know, changing your title or whatever else they need, depending on how you use your channel is beneficial. Uh, and obviously in the end, communication, 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 talk to your team, let them know, Hey, you know, 
I'm going live. You know, Sigma, you do um, these spontaneous streams yourself, and you'll be like, hey, mods, just so you know, I'll be going live in 20 minutes. And even that's good enough with the team we have. You know, we, there's enough of us now that you usually have at least one mod in chat, and usually two or three will jump in in due time. Um, but, you know, if you are trying to grow your channel, you probably have that one mod that you're always leaning on. Communicate with them. Hey, get yourself into a point that you can communicate with them and let them know. You know, I have, I have a, a, one of the people that I'm odd for that I've been there through the growth from like eight people to now they're consistently 50 people and getting bigger. They, they, they have tried their best to do that. And that really helps as a mod. And for them, it's a less stress. They can just worry about what they need to do. True, true. I agree. And, it, you know, I'll piggyback off of this because of this question is is down below. But how many moderators, uh, right, if you want to answer this along with the question is how many moderators should a channel have? Yeah, so that's kind of a, a schedule is kind of a I call it a double edged sword. So the reason I call it a double edged sword is you should absolutely have a schedule as most people in real life outside the streaming world have have a real schedule you know, work or this or that. The one thing about having a streaming schedule is it's 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 good to have that consistency. It's good to have that key. I fully agree. It's good for you. It's also good for that mindset. But the problem is a lot of times newer streamers or streamers that just can't log in and be, hey, I'm here. Let's have 2,000 people. The, the problem they run into is they are up against other streamers. Say they're playing, let's say Warzone. Right, they're if they're having a, a a schedule, but it always coincides with a bigger streamer. I have found, and I've actually studied this. A lot of those streamers will have lower numbers because they're not going to get watched because oh, this person's on this time slot, this person's on this time slot. Well, this person's better at this game. I'm going to watch them. However, on the counter, at having a schedule, you know, the people that are are you know in the channel and have been for a while they'll be like hey i know when this person's going live i know what's going on for this person so hey i can join them at this time so it's it's a double-edged sword and it's 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 a I've, I've talked about this since like 2014 with like phantom lord and dingle dipper so phantom lord i have a perfect example of this phantom lord had a schedule none of us knew when the hell he was going on i'll be brutally honest i love the guy none of us knew and all of us mod. he had like 40 mods none of us knew no clue he had a Discord that we, he, he chat to us, uh, but he would never tell us who was going on. All of a sudden, he'd just be on my Twitter and be like, hey, Phantom Lord is live. I'm like, oh, real? okay, well, there goes my day. Um, whereas Kriparian has an absolute set schedule every single day. I know exactly when he's going to start every day. He posts it a week in advance, and both of them are highly, highly successful, and they both did it two entirely different ways. So it's about finding what's best for you. And in terms of having the amount of mods, I think that's entirely based on uh, how big your channel is. Like if you have, if you're averaging 20 viewers, you don't need 20 mods, right? You you really mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. But if you have 2,000 viewers, you need mods. But you need mods in different time zones, if that makes sense. I wouldn't just have mo mods from my time zone, like West Coast. I would try to have mods from all different time zones to make it easier. Uh, for me to be like, if I have a spontaneous stream or if my schedule gets screwed up because of real life, I have that backup. So that's just my opinion on that. Yeah, I agree. I, I did a, I did a video about mods, and a lot of people didn't know that your mods won't count towards your viewer count. So a lot of times you go in and you see that these new streamers use a mod as a way of like recognition when it really should be a VIP. And they didn't know, you know, they had 10 viewers, but it turns out four of them were mods and they were like, dang it. You know, I'm only, I'm only hitting actually six viewers, let's say, and hell, one of them might be a bot, you know, or two of them might be a bot. You don't know. And so it's great to have them, like you said, you know, get a few of them that are maybe spread out across different time zones, but you don't need four mods if you average 10 viewers. Um, and the same goes for, for newer mods that may not know what they're doing versus four mods that are on top of it and they know your schedule and they can handle it uh, uh, you know two or three really good mods can handle a few hundred people no problem so finding that balance isn't always easy but i would definitely say please don't go out there and just start modding people for recognition you know that that's not what that sword is for 
Yeah, I would say the th in, when I made a note for myself on that question, um, I said at that point that three things, in my opinion, determine that. It is the size of the channel, and how, like how many viewers you normally have, how frequently you stream, as well as how long your streams usually run. And that time zone part of things is exactly that. Um, if you have one go-to mod and you're streaming 30 to 50 hours a week, you're going to overwork that one go-to mod. Um, having more than one go-to mod and you know, and a few other mods that can help in between uh, really lowers the stress on them as well and, and makes it effortless, effortless behind the scenes, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd say you don't have to throw your swords out all at once either. You know, if you're... It, it, let the... I, I agree. I agree with... Uh, with Rhett, the, the the size of your mod team should reflect the size of your stream. Um, it's going to be bigger if you don't have a set schedule. It's going to be smaller um, if you if you do. But you don't have to throw throw everyone a sword right away either. Um, if you are noticing things that you want to get done during a stream that aren't getting done, then you need to add people to your mod team. If you are if you see a bunch of mods sitting around doing nothing, well, you probably have too many mods. Maybe some of them should be VIPs. Yeah, and it's harder to take that sword away. I saw somebody just post about this on, on Twitter recently, and he said, you know, I, I have a lot of people that haven't shown up, and they're all modded, and I, I want to take their sword away and maybe just make them a VIP or something. But he was finding it hard to do that um, just as a friendship basis you know he's like oh, i don't want to take the sword away so it, it is harder to take it away than it is to give it and i don't think new streamers uh appreciate or caution themselves against that too often because they think ah you know van's my friend no problem here van have a sword yeah if something happens just you know do this thing and there's not really any guidance around it or schedule or, or whatever it is that the two parties need. So then you get stuck in that situation a year or two later where you're going, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take your sword away. And some people might take that really personal. So then you go open up a whole nother can of worms. So it can to be add on to that, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I would have to say uh, I've made the mistake. I, I used to stream a lot and I had a good group of friends. Now, this is before I had kids. I'm going I'm to make that a very clear point. This is before I had kids. And I made them all mods because, hey, your IRL friends are mods. I think that is one of the biggest mistakes possible because I'm no longer friends with any single people of those. And so I forgot that I had modded a few of them, and it just hurt the, my channel when they came in and just dropped things I won't say. And it's like, wow. So IRL friends is a very touchy subject, I find, in terms of do I moderate someone at IRL? True. 100%. Yeah. I uh, I did see a few instances where you go into a channel, like you said, and it's an IRL friend and they're modded and they kind of just talk to their friend like they would if they were just chilling at the bar or, you know, playing games at a house or something. And um, then a mod thing needs to be done and it's not getting done. And that's a perfect example. That person should be a VIP, not a mod, <laughs> you know? Or worse, they come in and they're the problem, mm. you know, because oh. they're, they come in and they're comfortable, you know, oh, this is my buddy. I can talk to him like, like we're at the bar and I'm sitting there, you know, quietly lurking in someone's chat, horrified by the things that are coming out of not just the streamer's mouth, but also this guy who's supposed to be a mod, you know, there's, it's the, the inmates running the asylum kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's been a few times I've left. I've left channels because the mods were uh, not not great, honestly. And and then there's other times where you actually stay. I think streamers need to know this. Like there are people that will stay just because your mods are that awesome. You know, they want to have that conversation. Your mods are are welcoming and uh, very inclusive with everybody, and they answer any questions somebody has. Like in Tarkov, you know, like Brian brought up earlier. If you have a certain build that you use all the time or a goal that you're working towards, the mod will help convey that because you're busy and people really enjoy the conversations with mods or every Sunday I run community night and I've, I've offered up a few times like, Hey guys, why don't I just make like an automated system? And then, you know, you don't have to deal with 
people uh because what we do is we have them go into the stream waiting room and they hang out with the mods and the mods kind of organize oh, okay this person needs to go to this map and so does this person so i'll team them up but i've actually had pushback from people saying oh no i love jumping in there we all just sit around and bs while while you're doing you know a, a raid with somebody else and i'm like oh okay so people show up and they they love bs and with van or brian or chi or whoever happens to be in there that night so you know that's another thing like make sure that your mods are, are actually interactive as well it's very important okay well i will move on to the next uh scenario unless you guys have anything else to add to that no uh, no, no. no okay no, far away what, what i i will say that one of the things you talked about how you leave um if I'm if I'm checking out um, a new streamer, whether it be due to suggestion or I like the tweet they said or something, if I come in and that streamer is giving me a bad vibe, you know they they have a bad attitude, um, I can try to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, you know, hey, maybe they just died a death that I missed because I just got here. Give them a second. Give them a moment. Let's give them some time. See what's going on. Um, but if they're being salty, for lack of a better word. And all of their mods are chiming in, keeping that salt going too. Then I know that that's probably just the vibe of this channel, and I'm going to get carry on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I totally get. Um, and I have been one of those mods where, like, you know, um, they my my streamer died to a cheater in an online game, and they're raging, and I'm like, man, you know, profanity. This that that pe person has this discrepancy in life, whatever. Um, but if we're all doing it, you know, it's hard to define, oh, maybe this is just a hate rage channel. You know, I'm going to keep moving, you know, so you got to be mindful of that sometimes too. Yeah, that's true. We've actually had a lot of instances pop up where we see what mods are saying in chat when situations happen and we, we're like, oh, no, no, no. Because we hold the mods even to a higher standard sometimes than the streamer because the streamer might just be having that moment. But yet the mod, like you had said, would just keeps it going, you know, and, and is constantly or is the first one to pop off with something. And you're like, wow, the streamer wasn't even thinking that or going in that direction. But here was the mod starting to fan a flame on this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not a good look. Not a good look at all. Your mods need to be logical and grounded. So that's important. Look for that. <laughs> uh, so here's the situation and you guys have all been in it. Um, you're a brand new mod. You're starting out. What is the advice that you would share? Like some good hindsight. Is there, um, I, I know like commands, you know, is, is one thing, how to make commands. Uh, but what is some advice that you would share to somebody that just got the mod position for a streamer and they want to do the best that they can? Um, number one, I would say to actually go to the Twitch channel for moderation. Um, there, they have like guide pages that show you all the most popular commands. And while you're there, go and actually read the terms of service. Um, a lot of people, myself included, for a very long time, and Van as a lawyer would probably lose his mind if um, if he gets on the topic about how many people are wrong of what is and isn't TOS. But actually finding out what is TOS is pretty important because you want to resolutely handle that situation when someone is breaking TOS. You don't want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You have to act if you want to protect the channel, um, in my opinion. Um, and plus, you know, um, due to ignorance or due to whatever personal, you know, um, pre prejudice isn't, I guess is the right word, personal prejudices or ignorances you may have, you may not even realize certain terms or certain things are breaking TOS. You know, it, it could even be not your fault. You're just ignorant to it. Um, go and read them and get familiar with them so you know what is and isn't allowed on Twitch as a whole. And uh, that's that's probably the most important step, learning the commands and, and learning what actually is to us. Beyond that, you know, don't let your emotions control your actions. Um, you will find a troll that will try to grieve for the channel and they will say some things that you can't help but be appalled by. Um, you're you you're typing right you're not, you're not on cam you're not the streamer you're not on camera you're not on mic give yourself a second if you have to turn your head away and just calm down if you really did react to something they said and then handle it you know um take and the last probably last bit of advice i would say is to 
try to not just react to the message, but look at the context. Um, a very innocuous and simple thing could be said and come off aggressive on its own. But if you realize there's a conversation happening, um, maybe it's not as bad as you initially read it. And especially, um, you know, looking at the context, obviously there's going to be messages you just have to moderate because they use a word that's not allowed or other things like that. But other times you can read something. Hey, uh, Sig, as your mod, I've seen it happen a couple of times. You're like, wait, what's going on there? And, and and we'll let you know right away. Don't worry. We got it. It's not the way it reads. You know, it's just a conversation you have to come into at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. um, that's an important thing to take into consideration too is, if you had gone AFK to go refill your drink and he came back and the first message you read, you're like, what the heck? You know, and you're going to go and react to it and moderate it. Go look at the rest of the messages, see if there was a conversation happening. Maybe context will save them. Maybe not. There are bad people out there, but, you know, give it a second. Take your time. Um, unless it's something that is TOS and that's why you want to get familiar with what is and is not TOS. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what the lawyer has to say next. <laughs> yeah, I should have I should have let him go first, but no, 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 no. You you made it perfect for him. That's a perfect setup for the lawyer. That's true. That's true. Um, I can't recommend reading agreements before you sign them enough. But in the case that you didn't read the terms of service before you signed up to apply, you know, to to abide by them, go do it now. Um, as a streamer, go do it now. As a mod, go do it now. Go do it now and. Do it again sometime within a couple of months because you're not going to remember everything and they change. <laughs> that's, that's that's the fun part is that they can change them whenever they want. They can add new words to the do not say these words list. They can, you know, uh, change what a hate raid is and how to deal with it. So don't think that once you know, once you know everything that you know everything forever, you're it's going to be a process. You will get, you know, some email from Twitch saying, this is what we're doing. Go, go, you know, don't just read the email, read the links that they put in those emails, because those are going to help you moderate your channel appropriately. Um, there are streamers who get shut down for not moderating their chat. Um, and sometimes those chats have moderators. They're just not doing their job. So don't be one of those chats. Don't let your streamer get in that kind of trouble. Um, because most of the time when, well, I won't say most of the time, some of the time when the streamer gets in trouble, when they get, you know, a, a ban, either temp or permanent, um, it's a situation that the mod could have done something about. So don't be the guy who lets their streamer get into that kind of trouble. So that's uh, as far as what Brian said, that's, that's my recommendation. Um, but I, I would say the thing that, that drives me up the wall with new mods is that they get that sword and they, they just want to swing it. They think that that makes them the coolest thing in the chat and they're just going to, you know, belly flop on chat, like, uh, like the, you know, it's the first day of summer at the pool. Mm -hmm. It is, it's obnoxious. Don't do it. Um, you were put in that position because the streamer trusted you. Don't, you know, spend the first, the first day or week or month or whatever, proving why you weren't a good choice <laughs> to be a mod. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, figure out what the streamer wants and go do that. Even if it's not something that you necessarily agree with or, or like, um, if that's what the streamer wants their, their, their chat, their stream, their vibe to be about, that's why you're there to help them accomplish their goals. So go do that. But please don't be the guy that's like, I am now the coolest thing in chat. Let Watch this sword. I will swing it at everyone. <laughs> Just don't do that. Oh, goodness gracious. Yes. <laughs> so you guys have both touched on the, uh, the, the, the legal aspect and the aspect of uh, know, know your grounds, know your limits, know, you know, know the terms of services. I'm going to go more of the, uh, the personal route. So as a new moderator, it's very important they don't just be a moderator and just sit there and watch chat, interact with the chat, get involved with the chat, get a feel for the chat. 
No, I, if, usually when you're a moderator, most times you you are familiar with the chat. But when you have that sword, it 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 is different. Um, especially for a streamer that's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to use uh, Kriparian as an example for this. So I, I you know, Kriparian's chat is very fun. It's 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 there's a lot of memes and stuff involved in his chat, but it is for the most part wholesome. I very rarely have to ban somebody. And we uh, when you get you get involved in that chat, and then you get then I, I got a sword, and I was like, well, do I get involved in this chat? You know what? And I, I for I was hesitant for like a first month, and so I messaged uh, Underflower, which is his wife, and I was like, Listen, this is what she's like, yeah, just have at her, have fun. And so I I would say can, interact with the chat, get involved with the chat, like, immerse yourself in the chat. Yes, you have that sword, but it doesn't mean you have to stop being you. That that's not what you 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 don't give up your status as a person. Um, just because you have a sword, you are you can sit there and chat, get involved. Now the meme have if you, there's memes going on, but they're you know not violating terms of services, of course, you know within reason. And if you get involved in that chat, you know a great example. There's uh you know we have payouts for you know there's bets on if Kriparian will do well in Hearthstone, and the example is sometimes the mods are not as fast to pay out the points and people will say mods and then i'll type in capitals as well mods mods get on your job and everyone and the people are like oh jeez because i'm getting involved <laughs> in it and they, and they and they love it they absolutely love it and they eat it all up and then we'll distribute the points so so don't be afraid to, to continue to be who you are you were made mod because of who you are so why why change who you are in that channel it, it, just stick to what who you are get involved and have fun. I think that's good advice, honestly. I, I love chats where mods are active and greet people because y you guys are actually what starts the ball rolling on a lot of things, on a lot of interactive stuff. So if uh, Van and Brian say hi to somebody in my chat, a few other people will say hi at the same time. And they start that whole vibe, you know, while I'm so busy doing this thing, somebody that might be new to the channel or just came in that I didn't get a chance to notice, they feel welcomed and other people are getting in there and saying hi to them. And, you know, everybody like the, the, well, now I'm going to date myself here, but, um, cheers, the show cheers, you know, everybody knows your name, you know, you walk in and everybody says, hi, it feels good. So yeah, I, I agree on that. I, um, I have lots of different personalities for mods, but they all are um, very complementary to each other, I would say. And they all have the same vibe for the most part. Van, like he pointed out earlier, you know, loves to bonk somebody on the head for, for saying something, whereas Brian might let it pass a little bit. But genuinely, everybody in the channel typically knows that. And um, it, it all vibes really well. So. And the TOS stuff. Uh, maybe I should read that, I guess. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, knew I was waiting for a man to roll his eyes. No, I've read it. I've read it. I swear I have. And, yes, that's good advice. You guys make sure you get out there and freaking read the thing. Please. Please. Because it will come up probably more often than, than you think it will. And you should at least know the basis of it for crying out loud. <laughs> you, you know, um, there are times where saying hello can actually be like free intel as a mod. Um, if you have a new person who just jumped in and said something in chat and you say hi and welcome them, their reaction to that hello can sometimes give you a clue as to what's coming. You know, um, if you think by the name that they're going to be a problem and you welcome them and they give you attitude as a return to your welcome, you know, real real quick, wait, wait, okay, they're on my radar. I'm just going to keep an eye on them. And you know what? Maybe it's a misinterpretation. They end up a part of the community, and it's awesome. But other times, you already had a clue because you saw the reaction. You saw what happened. And it's not surprising that, you know, they're asking for Bob's 18 minutes later. You know, <laughs> they, they, gave you the, they gave you the clue earlier. So it is a – I definitely agree with a Rhett there to, a, to, to be interactive and, and it'll help make your job easier in some ways. True. Very true. Uh, well, this is um, going to go into a spot where I talk about pet peeves, which I know we all have. So we're going to have to be pretty honest about this stuff. But it's also advice. So it, it's a combo situation here. Is, do you have any advice for streamers or pet peeves that you see that you'd like to share? 
And that's also going to go into moderators. So if you guys want to combine all of that together is what are some of your pet peeves and what is some of your best advice for streamers themselves? All right, I'll go first. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I am a snob uh, as a career. Um, I'm a professional, I'm a professional critic, um, and I am my biggest critic. So I'll let you know that I am not free of my own criticism, but one of my biggest pet peeves is audio. And if you are one of those streamers that are going to scream in your channel, please use a compression filter and correctly and set your mic volume. So it doesn't give us bad audio all the time. And also your neighbors had asked me to tell you streamer, you don't have to scream as a reaction to everything. Um, it's okay. You know, I know it makes you feel energetic, but there are times where you can become um, a good compressor can make you audible at all times and you don't have to scream. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm an audio snob. That is like my biggest thing. If I, if there's bad audio, I'm leaving and, and I love being in a channel and hate, excuse me. I don't love, I hate being in a channel enjoying myself, but now there's a scream and the audio just completely red lines. And I'm like, oh man, you're not compressing. Yeah, you're not setting up your filters right and so that's my pet peeve personally is, is that one thing that's good that's good i agree you know in terms of moderation moderators consistency is important to me um if uh if people are going to be timed out or banned for things that other people in chat have done um or other mods in chat have done we mentioned earlier the mod being the problem child um it, it not only makes it harder to moderate as one of the other mods but it also makes it hard for your community to be a part of your chat because now they're going to be a little more on edge uh, or what what isn't isn't allowed here you know um this person said this thing and they they got timed out but this other person said that thing and they're a mod and it was okay and this other person said worse things and nobody reacted so you know a little consistency in how you mod and what you do mod I mean, we talked about setting up your boundaries and what you tolerate as a streamer and letting your mod team know that that touches directly on that and i think it, it always uh helps to have a little bit of consistency and agreement among all mods and the streamer on what is and isn't allowed yeah but i can't time mods out i know i've tried to time brian out and i can't do it <laughs> keep trying it'll happen <laughs> don't give up <laughs> <laughs> So this is for so new streamers, right? Um, streaming is I, I, I'm gonna I, I'm a realist, and being a streamer is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life, without a question. I, I'm I'm talking. I have four kids, you know, been bought out of jobs that I was successful at. I, I've had multiple things go go astray in my life, and I will still tell you right now, streaming is one of the hardest things I have and will always attempt to do. It's always good to have an open mind and that failure is going to happen. Failure will absolutely happen. Um six these these the the dream of having, you know, a success it's it's always good to have a goal. You want to be successful, you want to have make money, you want to be you know, you can just log in and all of a sudden 2000 people are showing up. Uh, so that was a great added from earlier. It's understanding that failure is okay. A lot of people have that that stigma that if you fail, oh, I, I suck, or I, I, I'm terrible at this, or I'm not. Nope, you may maybe be terrible at that way you did it then, but maybe if you change it up into a different way, um, it might be better for you. So, as a, as a new streamer, and you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta find your niche. You gotta find what's best. You know what works for you, and. Don't be afraid to fail. Really, please don't be. I, I tell that to like literally people outside of the streaming world. Don't don't be afraid to fail. Failure does not mean it's the end. Does not mean it's the end. Okay. So if you have keep an open mind as a new streamer and a new mod, that if you fail, you know, get yourself back up. Find a different way of doing it. You know, and I'm I'm a big a big. I've had a lot of things go wrong in my life, and a lot of things go right, and a lot of things. That, actually, I would say about ninety percent of the things that went right was because something failed. And I learned from it, and I went and found a new and better way of doing something. Uh, streaming was a perfect example of that. Started on Twitch with my high hopes, didn't work out. Ended up going to a different site, made a ton of money, came back, and I had a following. So there's there's more than one way to get it done. And do not be at the. I cannot stress this enough. Do not be afraid to fail. Yeah, that that honestly, it's really true. It's really true. And I think that people just kick themselves nonstop 
uh, over it, and it's just not needed. It's really not needed. It's so good when you do fail because finding out what worked and didn't work is what's going to propel you. So, yeah, um, I would say pet peeves for streamers. Um, my biggest one is being fake. Um, I can, I can five minutes into a stream, I can tell whether this is the real you or this is somebody, you know, that you have crafted to be, you know, your ideal streamer that makes it big and hits partner. Um, just because he, you can only be you, right? I can only be me. I know who I am. I'm going to operate the same way in just about every situation. Um, I may apply different skills here and there, depending on where, you know, if I'm in the courtroom, I'll be applying different skills than if I'm in the, the mod room. Um, but you as a streamer, you're there, you're the product. Um, you end the game or the whatever it is that you're doing. Um, you are, if you are fake, then whatever you are building will also be fake because it will be based on something that's not real. Mm. So just be you, you know, if you're, if you're up, be up. If you're down, be down. Like, don't be a drag. If you're, if you're not feeling it, don't stream that day, take a day off. Think about your mental health, all that stuff. But don't go on and I see these streamers that go on and it's they're they're just full of energy and it's it's you know four or six hours of energy and and you know I have bitbot and I have these sponsors and I have you know here's my code for this or that the other thing and it's just like oh my god take up just take a breath sit down do you need some water I feel like you're on crack or something Jesus but um if if that's the way that you are, if that's the way that you do business, if that's, you know, if you're a bubbly, upbeat, energetic personality, then be that person. But if you're not that person, please don't try to be that person um, because it, it will come across as fake. And anybody who joins you will be joining something that is fake and it, it's, it's not sustainable. So do yourself a favor, relax. <laughs> There's Relax. One, one person in history that I know of in streaming that has been successful with not being who they are. I think we, we kind of know who this person is. Mm -hmm. Streams on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is the only person I've ever known that has been successful being someone they're not. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorites, yeah. too. One of my favorites. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I think that's an important point. Um, you know, if you're putting up a facade, eventually it is going to crack and that fake personality is going to, you know, be revealed. Um, but there are a few people, um, I, I could think of varieties, not just the person you alluded to, but other people um, that do have like a character they're playing. Um, and I think it's important to differentiate putting on an act and being a character. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you know, um, for example, I can think of a few that have pretty cool um, um, like animatronics that they use, like I think of Sharp Tooth or, or Games with Death, where, you know, that's, they're still themselves, but they're also portraying that character and they could do that. You know, um, a couple other people like the, who you alluded to, it can work, but there's a big difference between that and you trying to act like you're wholesome, holistic, positive, happy day person every moment, every waking hour of the day, because eventually you're going to accidentally let yourself through and be who you are and it's going to feel suddenly alien to chat and then i go like hold on who is that <laughs> who were you right there you know and, and and it can come through but also if you're if you're expending a bunch of energy to <clears throat> to be somebody that you're not i'm not talking about playing a character i i of course 100 percent. you know if you're if you have a character that works for you and you know you can play that character great but if you are trying to be a person who you are not and I, I use the, the energetic, you know, example for a reason, because those people will, will last about a week and then they either go totally comms dark and you never see them post on Twitter that they're live because they're not. Um, or it's, well, you know, I just need a, I just need a personal day. Um, I, I just need a personal week. Uh, I might come back to streaming, you know, in two and a half months and you know, you're literally not building anything because, you know, if you're taking, if you're, if you're up for a week and down for a month, 
Mm -hmm. You're going the wrong direction. Yeah, ran themselves into the ground for sure. Yep. True. True. Uh, well, that that does lead me into this. Um, and it's something that I definitely did not realize. Uh, Rhett, I agree with you a hundred percent. It that this is one of the hardest things that I have ever done in my life. And just like you, I've I've done a lot and I failed at a lot and I've had a bunch of different uh, jobs and and built businesses and sold businesses and streaming successfully as a career is the hardest thing I think I've ever done. Um, so that leads me to this, the streaming as a career does look fun, but it can be really stressful. What is something that you've seen behind the scenes or firsthand that actually shocked you that others may not know, or, you know, they're just getting into this and they're like, Oh my God, I didn't even know that that was a thing. What, what can you share? Are you guys just looking over your full long list of things that you have to share or <laughs> I, I had a short list. I have to be honest. I, I feel like um in this forum it'll be like kind of repeating what everyone else is gonna say. I was very fearful everything I was gonna list was gonna be the same list that Van and Rhett were gonna have. But um, you know, as a person that became new uh to Twitch and became a mod and then started modding for people pretty regularly becoming a head mod for people and or one of the reliable mods in another way um there is a wide gap in pay between the top streamers and the middle streamers and then of course you have all the small streamers that aren't really getting paid um but whatever perceptions you've had even if you've looked at that leaked list of payments and stuff like that don't forget that there are millions of streamers and you know only a few 50 or 100 were really shocking you the rest were kind of like around where you might guess um so no they're not getting rich off of this and it's you know how many hours you have to put in that was the other part of it, it was just how much work is needed off stream and between streams to make a channel grow and to keep a channel going um, whether it be updates from OBS, that means you have to rebuild every scene you ever had because you didn't have a backup to, you know, just keeping your PR up and keep your marketing up and all the different ways that social media has evolved. You know, it used to be, you know, just throw up a YouTube video and boom, you're going to get all kinds of Twitch streamers, uh, viewers. And now, you know, you got to have TikTok, you got to have the next thing that's right after TikTok that's already getting talked about. Uh, hover, uh, you know. I think it's Hover. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I hear a lot more people talking about. Her. Thank you, Sigma. I hear a lot of people talking about that more recently. I don't know if that's going to be the next thing, but it's out there, right? Yeah. Um, and there's so many other platforms. The amount of work that that takes, you know, if you're doing it by yourself, um, growing your channel, that is uh, so stressful. So regardless of what you think about your your mid tier, uh, low tier streamer, they're more stressed than you think <laughs> if they're trying to actively grow their channel. Um, it, it's, it's incredible how much work can actually be done if you really want to put your time and mind into it. Thanks, Brian. I'm very upset now. I just figured out TikTok and now I have to go figure out Hover. <laughs> uh, you're a lawyer. You'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lawyer. I don't have time to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you got, you got my point. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, streaming, yeah, streaming, I mean. People underestimate the amount of work, but in truth, I, th I find it it's the same as real life. I mean, people underestimate the amount of work that it comes into. So, I, I, for example, I'm a manager of a retail store. And to get where I am now, uh, it took a lot of time and effort. So, it, the one thing I, I stress to people um, for streaming that they don't understand is do not forget to take care of your personal life. People will get entranced and engulfed in their streaming career and their streaming life and just be like, I have to do this successful. I have to do this. St try to stay away from words like that. Uh, people don't people underestimate the power of positivity. I think that's one of the things I've noticed. People just, they underestimate just how being positive. You know, you have a bad day of streaming. I, I'm done. I'm, I'm washed up, you know, something like that. It... <laughs> maintaining a positive attitude is probably one is very difficult absolutely it's one of the hardest things to do and people underestimate you know you know when they leave the stream for example and they're all oh, you know uh, this sucks well why think like that think what went right in that stream that caused you to allow you to stream 
And people underestimate, I see this all the time, and I've had conversations with people about this. They just, they go into this dark, dark place about it. And it, it, try to, it, it be like, there's a lot of big streamers that will post on, you know, their their Twitter or something like that. Be like, oh, I'm feeling down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's not the norm, okay? It, it, do not get caught up in what other streamers will do and what other streamers will say and what, you know, bigger streamers will will, will do. That's not, that's not you, right? You are a person that is not, you're not a bigger streamer. You know, you're not there yet. And understand that. And people have trouble understanding. They have this goal in their head, trying to make small steps along the way. And people forget that. People just have this big envision of they watch, they watch all these big streamers make all this money. No, don't get caught up in that. Stay in the present. And a lo- I, I can't tell you how many streamers forget this. Just stay in the present. Take it one stream at a time. A- analyze the numbers and go from there. And that, that's that's one thing I will say that uh, you, you cannot forget. Good advice. Yeah, I I sort of took this question a little more more pointedly, although I do I did agree that uh, the self doubt happens to everybody. Um, so I identify as a mod who streams. I've been streaming for like four years, but I'm not a streamer. I'm a mod who streams. Um, and I started streaming, um, specifically so that I could understand what, what some of the stresses are, like, what are, what are these people talking about, um, that I'm modding for? And I've just sort of kept it up because it's a small stream. I'm having fun playing a game. Who cares? You know, I'll put a stream on. I'm not doing it so that I can, I I don't have any of the same goals of the folks that I mod for. Um, I have a a very nice job that I will keep forever. Um, not this particular job, but you know, the, the, the career that I've chosen will pay my bills. I'm not worried about that. Um, so I have very different goals than other people, but I wanted to understand what, what are the, when I'm dealing with a streamer, I need to understand more about what they're talking about because they're coming to me with these issues or these feelings or whatever. And I don't see what the big deal is. So I started streaming. Um, and I, I, I got to say that the self-doubt happens to everybody. You will go through a period of self-doubt. Maybe you have a bad stream. Maybe your numbers aren't up, whatever. Um, and, and that doubt will creep in. Um, but what I would say specifically that might help some folks that are just starting out and have some of these specific goals is um, the the point at which people declare themselves a full-time streamer. You know, they they quit their job and they are suddenly streaming full-time. And I don't think that people truly understand what a huge decision that is. Even if you have a crap job that you hate, it's an income that you are not grinding for every day. Like, um, so I play Tarkov, Escape from Tarkov. You grind through your levels to get to the traders that you want, right? Full-time streamers grind the exact same way, okay? You you have to, you're creating content on Twitch to turn it into a video for YouTube, to clip it down so that it fits on TikTok, or whatever the heck hover is. Um, (laughs) And, you know, this is, these are things that take up time and they take up, they take time away from your families. They take time away from the other things that you want to do with your life. So declaring yourself a full-time streamer, I've seen so many streamers who are like, yep, ta-da, we made it to 50 subs or whatever. We're a full-time streamer now. And I'm like, I, I hope you didn't quit your job because you're going to have, you have to build way past where you think you should build in order to have a consistent month to month income because your subs are going to go up, your subs are going to go down, your donos are going to go up, they're going to go down. You know, bits is going to vary month to month. You are, as a streamer, you have, that income is going to be variable every month. And we just got through a period in Tarkov where we had a drops day and drops brings out everybody and everybody who streams during that drops period 
has a bump in their paycheck. And after that bump, you see, you know, half a dozen people go, ta-da, we're a full-time streamer now. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh God, mm -hmm. here we go again. And they're, you know, they sneak back into, you know, whatever career field they were in before afterwards, because it's just, it, it's, um, you know, it's not sustainable. So don't, don't jump into this field too, you know, with both feet. You know, make sure that you are, your, your numbers are sustained for a given period and you have a consistent income. Even the low end of your income is something that you can live on before you take that dive and just, you know, slow down. You don't have to rush into these kind of decisions. So these are big, big decisions. And it's the dream that everybody thinks they want and they get there and they realize that your dream might be a nightmare. So slow it down, be deliberate about the decisions that you make, especially things that are going to affect your income. Because the worst thing you can do is make a decision like that and then realize that health insurance is exp expensive. <laughs> realize that, you know, you have to buy a car at some point. Realize that you're not getting uh, anything put into your retirement aside from what you are putting in. Stuff like that. Um, it, it's streaming is, can be, can be, a very fun and cool career to be in, but you have to be realistic and very deliberate when you make that call. Yeah, that's very true. I, I've interviewed, I think it's like eight or nine full-time streamers now. And I always ask them, how many hours do you work behind the scenes? And it seems that the consensus is for about every hour that you see somebody on stream, there's two to three hours of work that is happening behind the scenes. So you have chat or people will reach out to you and be like, where the hell have you been? You know, what's going on? It's been, you know, you didn't even stream yesterday. And you're like, uh, I didn't, but I somehow sat in my office for 14 hours and, you know, got all this stuff done. And they don't realize that this is an actual business. If you want to make this a career, a full-time living, you have to treat it as a business. And the amount of confusion about that is something that I'm striving to change. You know, actually file, filing an LLC, um, putting money away from for taxes and health insurance and your car payment and treating it as a business. Um, on top of all of the Google degrees that I joke about that you have to get, even though it's not a joke, is all of a sudden you're a graphic designer, you're an editor, you're paying for software that you didn't know that you had to pay for. You had to be your own agent and negotiate contracts that you know absolutely nothing about and are scared to ask for advice on. You don't know how much your panels are worth. That is something that drives me up the wall is that they, uh, these new streamers or streamers that are just coming into being large enough for a company to approach them, these companies will take advantage of you because it's in their best interest because of business. This is not a friendship. This is not uh, you're scratching their back and they're scratching yours and it's gonna be perfectly even. It is never perfectly even. You can walk away both happy, um, but you've got to make sure that you're valuing your time and your money and your effort. And then they get burnt out. And I went through this, you know, Van, Brian, you've watched this. I get overwhelmed. I don't communicate well. And then I turn around and I go, okay, if I actually need some of this stuff taken off of my plate, I'm going to need to get one or two or three editors. I need somebody else to do the graphics. And these all cost money, which you brought up, Van. These are not things that you're typically putting money aside for. And you realize, oh, well, if I normally spent eight to 12 hours creating one video for YouTube, and now I have to pay an editor to do that, and that's $100, and that's only one video, and you need to have that out weekly or two times a week, you're looking at four to $800 a month that you really need to do for your own sanity and for the growth of your channel, but you didn't schedule that into how many subs you need to average every month. And these are the cost of doing business. And it happens every January and February, I start getting messages from people going, um, Sigma, the IRS, I think I might owe like $15,000. And I'm like, oh shit. Good Lord. You know, and, wow. and it's great. You were really successful, but you didn't plan for that because you're not used to running a business. And 
it's something that like I said that with this channel that I'm I'm trying to strive for here is is giving these people a head start on what's down the road uh van you know that I go by the saying proper preparation prevents piss poor performance so hopefully we can properly prepare some of these people for these hurdles that they'll hit but yeah it is it's a uh, it's an actual business and for every hour that you see somebody on that's successful they're probably working two to three hours behind the scenes that you will never see so i recall early on when i diluted myself into thinking i could possibly stream and people would care for like the six months i streamed before i went back to just being a mod um i was doing a lot of research and one of the people that i uh you know read up on his advice was you know beginning of your day make sure you're showered and changed for your stream and i thought i'm at home it's my day off i don't have to go to my career why do i have to do all of that for a stream and he said you know um prepare for the, the job you want not the job you have right you know that type of thing like uh fake it till you make it type of mindset and it really kind of brightened up my um made me more aware of just how much of a business this could be and actually psychologically how something as simple as that could really help you to remind yourself yes you're having fun you're you and your friends are doing your multiplayer games your co-op games you know you're doing whatever silly games or chat whatever but in the end if you want to do this right you do have to look at like a business and su sub decay is you know probably the hardest realization you have if you're just about to quit your day job to do a tend to do this full time because you can like everyone else has already said get a little distracted to the growth and not realize you know in, in a month of all those gift subs are going away you know like you know if, if you can better track how many people chose the sub compared to gift subs it might help benefit you but all those gift subs are going away after the month so just because you hit whatever your goal is whether it be 150 500 a thousand two thousand if you know if 50 to 80 percent of those gift subs made up that goal next month they're probably going to all go, go, go away mm -hmm. and you know unless you are lucky enough and do present product enough that makes people want to continue that sub but you know you have to i can't re echo more importantly everything everyone else has said and like you know check and see how long those gift subs last you know I, there are plenty of people i ended up subbing to for half a year or a year due to a gift sub but there are a lot more that I let just die when the gifts have ended, mostly because I got to take care of me too. And it's not because I didn't like them. I, I, I just called a bunch of subs from my, my little plate right now because I'm trying to take care of myself financially. And it's not, you know, I, I feel bad. I want to support all these people. I enjoy the content they're making and everything else, but I got to take care of me. And, you know, you can't take it personally if people unsub. <laughs> Sometimes it's not your fault. It's their fault or reality's fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, we are going to move on to something that's that's kind of funny that I'm excited to hear <laughs> is what are some of the craziest moments that you have experienced being a mod for a channel? Some of the silliest shit that you've seen out there on Twitch or YouTube that you've uh, been a mod for and you've just been like, damn, this is going in the record book. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> How do I draw in just one in ten years? Oh my god! Um, yeah, you're gonna really? you're gonna you're gonna outdo all of us, right? You've got I'll, the most experience. I'll, I'll go last. I have to think. I have to think about this for a sec. I'll I'll go last on this one. Okay. I think the first time. Oh, go ahead, man. I'd rather hear what you have to say, honestly. I was gonna say I I probably have other ones as I as I th sit and think about them, but the the one that um it, it comes up every now and then where you get uh, follow botted or something like that. Uh, a bunch of bots show up in chat and start saying the same thing. And it's pretty obvious when it happens because the chat just fills up with the same message, you know, 4,000 times. And that's kind of um, like, you know, we, we talk about mods being handed the sword and that's sort of the, the my favorite moment as a mod um, because the chat suddenly just goes completely ballistic um, and all you have is a target rich environment for that sword. And I just, I, I, it's, it's my favorite every time it happens, not because it's a good thing to happen to the channel, but because it's, you know, you get to turn that, you know, put it in follower only mode or, you know, uh, you know, emote only mode or whatever, and just start bonking. And, you know, 
see how many you can get before the other mods or or the streamer or whoever it is that's that's coming down to you know to start swinging and you, you know you can get you can get more bands that that one five minute period than the rest of the year combined and uh it's just you know it's it sounds like i have this nostalgia for it and it's, it's really annoying when it happens but it is also kind of fun because you know it's like you know you're just sitting there minding your own business and all of a sudden you know stuff kicked kicked off and you know you're out there at the okay corral just blasting away at anything that moves it's great this is what we trained so, for <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's like yeah it finally <laughs> happened <laughs> so that that should start us off on the on the the right path i'm sure I'll, i can hand it off to somebody oh, no, i'm else. definitely going off the right path with my story don't worry about that <laughs> i think the first time that um the first or second time that eft had drops and van was there myself was there and we had uh sigma was doing her 24 for drops and we got a huge raid a pestily raid and right after that we had another huge raid because you know that like it was like a right around shift change type of thing where mm -hmm. people were and when you have a channel you're normally modding that's at about 300 people 100 whatever whatever size you're used to and suddenly you have not just 10 but 20 or 100 times that in chat everything is on fire and and you better know what you're doing and now you know what we did um and i'll mention it is we had a voice channel so we could coordinate and we we're like okay i'll get this person you get that person type of thing i'm doing this you do that type of thing it was really helpful but man that lasted a good six hours of chaos you know where you you had to keep your eyes open because there's there, uh, a lot of the weirdos come out of the woodwork when it's mm -hmm. drops week i don't care what game you're in but especially in eft um any game you know drops week or drops day whatever it is uh, you're going to get anyone and everyone that was ever interested in that game in every channel trying to get you know the viewpoints for that or the drops you know depending on how they're doing the drops that time and you can get madness in chat you know with all kinds of tos uh you know failures happening all kinds of personalities all kinds of horrific things are said about all kinds of people um and you got to stay in your game and the worst part the thing that you know as a mod you got to be mindful of is go and review like i think i mod view makes this a lot easier now see who was banned and why you know make sure you're not accidentally banning the wrong people but man you know we you can keep going and going it was that was chaos it was the first time that really happened and you actually had to really mod um very much along the lines of what, what van's talking about but it was tenfold it was I don't ever want to go back to it, but I know it'll be coming up the next time drops comes. <laughs> right, right. Actually, people ask me that. They're like, um, Sigma, what's it like to stream to 100,000 or 120,000 people? And I'm like, you guys, nothing in my office changes. The game doesn't change. My outfit doesn't change. Like, nothing in my environment changes. Everything's fine. If you want to talk to somebody who's stressed out, go talk to the mods. Because I'm still sitting there playing the same damn game, talking to the same damn people, just trying to read chat as as quickly as I can and being helpful and, and all the stuff that you typically are when you're in that environment. But what's happening behind the scenes, this is this is where your mods come in. So if you want to know like, oh shit, what's it like? Go talk to a mod. You'll hear the actual shit in the trenches there. I'm just out here, you know, still playing the game. Like I said, nothing, nothing changes. My keyboard doesn't get like deformed or my mouse go crazy. Nothing happens, but the mods are busting their ass. Yeah. And oh, in me... fact, Van, that's when you had to jump in. I'm so sorry. It's oh, when you had to jump oh. in to come save Robin. I think the first time was when drops was happening in it. And that's how a lot of other mods tend to get modded is uh in that exact situation is like oh you know something's going on well van is trusted in sigma's community and so and so's community just mod him here he knows what he's doing and you guys tend to get you know your swords start multiplying but yeah i remember you came in there robin mm -hmm. gave me mod i had just finished my drops you obviously knew what it was like and a few other people jumped in and you know then we were helping robin out with his 50 or 60 or seventy thousand people I had I had you for 24 hours and I was like okay we'll raid this guy and then 
uh, I got modded and he didn't have his mods on for like eight hours and I ended up doing 24 hours with him. And I was like, Woo, yeah. I am cooked. <laughs> oh, man. My condolences to your body on that one. Oh man, it was bad. Yeah, it drops wow. us bonkers for Tarkov. It really is. I do like playing Tarkov. Not, I don't, I'll, I can't stream it because I just too stressful, but, uh, <laughs> I definitely play. I just, man, that game just, it, it just puts gray hair on, on my head, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, it does. You still have hair on your head? <laughs> <laughs> I did last year, but then we had drops twice. <laughs> Seriously, I am, I am losing my hair. I mean, I, Sigma knows, you know, for having four kids, you know, and three daughters, it's like, oh, great, you know, three daughters, three weddings, three lives, you know, great, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, so I, I'm losing it every year. It's My kids actually have noticed, Dad, your hair. It's 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 not there's not as much. Yes, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. I blame you. Thank you. It's yeah. the boyfriends you got to worry about. The wedding is why, fine. It's the boyfriends. Why would why would you say that? Like I mean, why would you say? That? <laughs> I mean, I now, now I got to added added more stress into that. But, oh, oh my, my internet's breaking up. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two stories that come to mind. One is when I was streaming, and one is one as a mod. So the streaming one, I got hosted by Ninja one day, and uh, it was on my thirtieth birthday. Up, oh, and I just revealed my age, and I was, I, I was like, okay, I was playing Fortnite, yes, Fortnite, and all of a sudden I got, I just my channel just went haywire. My mods were messaging me like, Chris, what the hell is going on? And I look, and Ninja hosted me. I was like, oh my, oh my god. god, I was like, oh my god, Ninja of all people host me, and he's messaging me. He's like, hey, happy thirtieth birthday, man, enjoy. I was like, oh. Lord, my, and I honestly believe that my first thing in my mind was my poor mods, <laughs> my, my poor mods, because I went from like 50 viewers to about 45,000 in a heartbeat. Oh, shit. Yeah, and I, 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 I agree with so, you. Yeah, nothing truly changed. I actually ended up playing better. <laughs> I ended up playing better and winning more, but I, I felt horrible for my mods. And after the stream ended about 12 hours later, I felt I messaged them. I'm like, I feel terrible for you guys because there is no universe where you can handle it. No universe when you're used to 40 or 50 people. And as a moderator, my favorite time. So Phantom Lord tried to break the uh, subathon record uh, back way back, uh, probably in 2000. And it was about eight years ago. So, yeah. But yeah, about eight years ago, he tried to break the subathon record for most subs in, in a stream. And he messaged his mods. He's like, "Yeah, I'm going all the, you know, until it ends." I'm like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "Well, if it, if it's 72 hours, it's 72 hours." I'm like, "Oh dear God." Oh God. I'm like, I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> Our mods are all messing each other, going, "Are we, are we, are we doing this? Are we doing this?" I actually physically ended up taking time off work. I kid you not. But it's also, it, it was crazy because one person got so mad at him that they actually hacked the Discord. And then they also managed to uh, disable every single mod on his channel. Okay, every single mod got disabled. It was gone. Every oh, mod was shit. gone. Someone had actually was pissed off enough that he was doing this. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, no mods. Oh my god. And he has like eighty thousand people. So we're freaking out. Middle of the channel. Meanwhile, he's on like this twenty-five thousand uh, sub train going on, and we can't help him couldn't help him and we felt absolutely terrible so it was just an absolute chaotic nightmare getting all the people that were subs thankfully we had the discord if we didn't have a discord he was cooked like there's no way you're getting around that right and so that was one of my favorite memories is us just scrambling around the stream ended up being like 34 hours and i was there for all 34 hours but to, the the amount of scrambling the amount of people that bot raided the amount of people that uh, just try to stop the stream or try to, you know, I'm not going to say the word, but the four-letter word that ends with uh, an OS at the end of it. It, it. Everything and anything that wanted to go wrong in that stream was going wrong. And that's, I, I know that sounds weird. That's one of my favorite moments, but that's like everything you, you think about as a moderator in one stream. And it, it, to this day, that that will be one of my most favorite streams and one of my most stressful streams because we all, like after after he thanked us and he he, he bought us a couple of things, but it was, I will never forget that day. Just, uh, I was dead. I was just absolutely dead. But it was, it was rewarding and also deflating. I think I banned like 14,000 people that day. Oh so, my God. Yeah. It was just, just like, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was one of those kind of days. So that's my favorite. 
So to bookend this, I guess, since I, I went first, I had another one that has popped to mind. Sure. Happened this year, actually. Nice. We just got through the drops period, and I mod for a bunch of different channels. Those were all, you know, the usual level of, of chaos. But I also, uh, at the time, and they, they keep mess, you know, moving their mods around, so, you know, I'm currently not modded, but I expect for their next event, I'll be modded again. I was a mod on Battlestate Games channel. And that was pretty, pretty handy because when Evasion was having their daily events, I could go over there and, you know, do the mod thing for them. But they would also do their own stuff on their own channel during drops. And those were the ones that chaos reigned. And we had, I think we had... 50 or 60 mods active at one point and we needed all of them. That's, that's all fine and good. You know, you, you figure out what your role is and you do that thing. You know, you're, you're making sure that they're not cussing in some weird language. You, you know, whatever your, your job is amongst that, amongst that team of 40 or 50 people. Uh, until the one day that I was the only one that showed up and I'm sitting there modding a chat that half of it's in Russian and most of the chats that I mod, you know, you, we have a, a, an English command, you know, speak English or or don't speak, <laughs> you know, because the streamer is English. The, you know, the mods speak English. It's just easier to make sure that it stays in English. Uh, Battlestate Games doesn't have that rule. You can speak in whatever language that you want there. And there are people that know that. So they'll come in and they'll start speaking in Russian and they'll say, hey, are there any mods? And they'll say it in Russian so that if you don't respond, they'll go. Aha. Uh -huh. If there are mods, they're, you know, they're speaking in English and I can say whatever I want. So um, I'm sitting there modding this thing by myself. Thank God Sneaky Russian came in and um, that's the guy's name. No, I'm not saying anything bad about Russians. <laughs> Sneaky Russian came in and uh, he messaged me because he saw, you know, he's a mod over there too, where he was at the time. And uh, he's like, hey, uh, you holding it down over here? I'm like, uh, yeah, you can jump in wherever. Just go ahead, you know, take anything off my plate because I have it all right now. <laughs> but that was that was wild because, you know, once you set up the automatic translator through Chrome, you know, you're you're not necessarily you don't necessarily know if that person's speaking in, you know, some other language. You just know what they're what the basic translation is, is for what they've said. So there are people who think that they're, they can go in there and speak in, you know, Korean or Farsi or whatever language they want to with impunity. And they're saying these horrible things. And then, well, I can see what you're saying. So I'm going to, you know, ban that person. And then you get the unban request and it's in, you know, some other language and you got to go through the whole translation process again. So it, it was, it was absolute chaos. And there's over a hundred thousand people in there. Oof. So chat's just flying. Yeah. So, oh God, it was just, and I'm in there by myself. It was awful. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> rough. Oh my God. Ugh. Yeah, being stranded on an island, the only one in 100,000, no thank you. And and on top of it, and everyone knows a different language. Right, right. Yep. <laughs> Uh, well, we have we've covered quite a few subjects, so I'm gonna combine a, a few of these questions here. Um, is when you go to a small streamer's channel, like now that you've been around the block, right? You can spot these things from a mile away. But when you go into a small streamer's channel, what is the first thing that you notice, and what is the first thing that usually you're like, damn, they could improve that? You know, usually relatively easy. We're not talking about hiring like a full graphic designer, but what is something that you can see in these small streamers that you're like, you need to nail this? Well, I already said it, so I'll say it again. I'm an audio snob. Bad audio will get me to leave a new channel immediately. Um, and I know audio isn't easy, but it also, you can usually tell pretty quickly that the people that put no effort into it, that didn't do any research, that didn't put any filters on, that just have a mic hot live and in their room, and that will get me to leave immediately. Um, I don't expect you to have the best mic, um, but you can still, even a, a simple gaming headset, you can still make it better than most just by doing a little research and improving your audio. And in terms of uh, 
the first thing they can improve on. I, I try to put it as kindly as I could, or at least word it specifically. When I come to a channel, and mo most people go to a channel, yeah, you want them to go for you, but they're going to usually come for the game first, right? That's what gets them there, generally. Um, and the, it's a better experience for people who want to watch both you and your content to not have these encroaching bars of information and animation everywhere. Um, I feel like screen clutter is real. And it is a pet peeve of mine. And most of the newer streamers, they're they're gonna use a, like a, a simple template from one of these, you know, websites. I'm not gonna advertise any of them, but there's plenty out there that give you uh, downloadable templates. There's some that come right right from you know the the OBS and other places like that. Um, but they don't have to be huge, and they don't have to be crazy animated, and especially don't have to be viciously contrasting in color to what your content is. Um, it, it can really get distracting, and 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 get in the way if, if you know, the game ends up being only 80% or 70% of the screen. Um, you can do it. You can do 70% of your screen being the game and do it right. But if you do it sloppy, it, it is really distracting and becomes uh, less appealing to want to return, uh, in my opinion. And these are my personal peeves and what I think the two things that people can do with a little bit of time, you know, to, to invest in what they want to make their channel be. I agree. I see that a lot. And it, it does get a little frustrating when you just want to watch the game. Um, and the audio, I've heard this a lot. Twitch is second monitor uh, content. I've heard that said quite often where people will be doing a bunch of other things and just have a channel open on the other side. And if the audio is terrible, they don't really want to listen to that. Or if you're screaming all the time, you mentioned that with, with not putting your, your filters on or making the adjustments that you need to make. It, it can get really frustrating and you just switch to another channel that's maybe a little bit more chill or, or whatever because you're trying to get work done and watch somebody at the same time. So yeah, audio for sure. I find, I know this is really interesting. Uh, what I find when I, like I, I used to, uh, I'm not going to name the site, but I used to, uh, to see, I used to go around seeing who would break the, the terms of services and I used to go around uh, warning people of what was uh, good for the site and what was bad for the site. Um, the biggest thing I always seemed to see was the, the the streamer just did not pay attention to their own chat. I I I know that's like the like it should be just elementary that you should be like oh your chat is number one, but I I can't tell you how many streamers I'll go to and they'll have absolutely no recognition of their chat whatsoever. You can say something and they'll notice it like 15 minutes later because they're too entrenched in their game. And you go, what, really? And mm -hmm. I, I know it, it seems like people would, you think you would pay attention to chat, but I, I go to new streams all the time. I'm, I'm consistently doing that, even to this day. And it's the same, it's the same story. You, you have to, you have to look at your chat. Now you don't have to, like, if there's a lurker in there, don't disturb the lurker. Don't be like, oh, hey, how's it going when they're just watching? But if somebody says something, you know, you don't want to, obviously if it's derogatory it's a little bit different but if you know hi how's it going hey i'm new here or something like that and they, you don't respond why why would i stay in that channel right like it doesn't make any sense but it's just the, it's people just don't pay attention to their chat and i think that's you got to you got to be involved in in looking at your chat consistently that's where a second monitor obviously comes into play but you you got to you got to pay attention to your chat i mean I, I i thought it would be elementary that people would know it but it's it, it, it you don't people just don't yeah, that's true. That's true. There's been plenty of times you go and say hi to somebody and you're like, hello, anyone? Like, we're all talking here. You know, there's five or six of us at least and nada. Kind they, of confusing. There, there are more than a few people who have applied to streamer, streamer inks, streamer battles, and then eventually evasion that we, I went to go vet their channel to see what they're about. And I try to interact with them and you say hi, get to know them a little bit. And I'm there for 20 minutes and they never replied to me. And I had to move on and just be like, well, they don't care. You know, they're not, they're not streaming. They're just playing a game on video. Um, and, you know, I'll give them a little leeway, especially with whatever is happening. You know, if they're in a fight, I'm not expecting them to break that for me. But, you know, you, you got out of raid switched games to a different game, you know, uh, checked out a YouTube video and, and you literally haven't replied to, you know, it, the only message in your chat or only a few messages in your chat. That's not a good look. You know, people, there aren't many, that many people that are that bad, but it has happened a lot. So I agree with you. 
And and Rhett, I think it's really important. There's probably something you didn't mention anywhere earlier that you just said, and it's probably one of the good tips to give a new moderator as well. You as a moderator have access to the viewer list. Correct. Don't call out the lurkers. You don't if they haven't talked in chat, don't call them out. You might be you might even have a rapport with them. You might be getting cute, but calling out a lurker without them ever speaking in chat is just uncomfortable. There might be, I might be lurking because I'm just, you know, like Sigma said, it's my second monitor content right now. I'm working on something else. Um, it, it's not a good feeling. Don't do that. That's a faux pas. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I have to say the first thing, <clears throat> the first thing I notice it, when I go to a new chat and Sigma's, Sigma knows this because we have yelled about it while going to a new streamer. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, if you have your follower only button clicked in your chat, I'm not going to follow so that I can talk to you. And neither is anybody else. So if you have, you know, followers only, subs only, emote only, whatever it is, I'm just going to move on. It's It's not worth the effort of trying to you know, coach you through basic etiquette. If you want people to come in and, and stay, then make it so that they can talk to you. Because mm -hmm. that's the worst thing. You don't even get to the point of not being able to respond to them if you never let them talk. Um, so just make sure that your chat is set up the way that it should be set up. Um, uh, that's part of what your, your pre-stream checklist should be is it off follower only the reason for follower only is not so that you can you know oh well i want them to you know i want to get more followers to the channel so I'll put on a follower only so that i'll encourage them to follow no it has the opposite effect it encourages them to go away um so that, that's a that's a moderator tool that's that's when chat is kicking off and you got a bunch of bots who are in there asking if you want to be famous you know that you can put it on follower only and those bots aren't equipped to follow. So that'll stop the, the spam. That's what that's for. So just make sure that crap's turned off, know your chat um, and not just the people in the chat know how it operates. The other thing that I, that will get me to, to run screaming from a chat is it's not just about you. It's not just about the game. If you're in discord and you're talking to people, you're also responsible for what they're saying. And I have left so many chats because, or so many streams, I guess, because there was some, you know, one of your buddies was in there being one of your buddies and it's coming through or, you know, they're, they're too loud. Maybe it's a sound thing. Maybe they're just saying things that are either TOS or right there on that line. You're responsible for everything that goes out on, on the internet from your stream. So make sure that you're, you're, the people in your discord know that you're streaming so they don't come in and say TOS things. If they do get them out of there. Um, and, and just make sure that you are, you understand the content that you're putting out because that's part of the, is, is the people that you're playing with. Very true. Yeah. These are all really good points. I hope, I hope any streamers out there and mods are just taking notes. That's all I can think right now. And by the way, any links that we talk about, I will definitely put down below, uh, which I know in the next section, uh, which will start wrapping this up, will be really important. Uh, Brian, you actually sent me one of the links last night. So if you want to talk about that, you can. But it's this is going to be a two-parter, and it's going to be, is networking important for mods and why? And then any tools of the trade that you recommend, like being able to view the chat history or Van you talked about earlier, uh, having the translator open, are, are there tools that you guys use as mods of these large channels that you find so helpful that you wish, you know, you would have known a lot earlier? I guess I'll jump in here. Um, is networking important for mods? It, it, yes. Um, I think that networking can make your job a lot easier. Um, again, I, most of the people that I mod for in the, in the escape from Tarkov, world um it's a pretty well-defined community you know um there, there's not a lot of people who are just passing through uh you're either in the community or you're you're really not um 
And I'm not saying that because it's exclusive or anything. It's just the people who play Tarkov play Tarkov. And that's pretty much like that. That's their, probably their main game. Um, so when you have people that are coming in and being toxic to one streamer or, you know, a group of streamers or whatever, um, it can be helpful if you're tied into a, a mod community where somebody can reach out and be like, Hey, here's the name of somebody who's been a toxic turd. Um, keep an eye out for him. And you can either, you can take whatever steps are appropriate for your channel. Maybe you, you know, if you trust this person and your, your streamer trusts this person, then you can just add them to the ban list and not worry about them at all. Uh, maybe it's just that you put them on a list and you're looking for that name to pop up in chat so you can keep an eye on them. Whatever it is, it can help you. You can help you do your job if you're networking. So, yes. Also, the, the tool I was talking about before, the translating, um, if you're on Chrome, and I'm sure other browsers have this, a similar function, but if you're on Chrome and you right-click on the chat list, um, you have an option to translate this page, and that's just what I use. You can do that also in, you know, other other uh you know sub pages within that within the chrome page but uh just right click and go down to translate this page and it should stay updated if it doesn't you know if it starts coming through in in the other languages then just refresh the page and do it again in terms of networking with mods um I, I, it, it that's networking in general is always good especially if you're trying to make your it, if you're trying to make, you know, trying to be bigger in an online presence, whether it's streaming, whether it's being a moderator, it's always good to network. But you gotta, you gotta, you can kind of make that term more uh, focused. Network with the right people. What I mean by that is, if you're a escape from uh, Tarkov, which I agree is a niche, is a niche. I mean, if you play Tarkov, you play Tarkov. Simple as that. If if you're, if I'm a escape from Tarkov mod and I'm trying to uh, go talk to a Fortnite mod, that doesn't make any sense. Let's let's be honest here. You're not gonna bear. You're gonna barely ever see the same people in a Fortnite stream than you are in a Turkov stream. I mean, you guys have to attest to that. There's just no way. It's just the two entirely different genres that people wouldn't stream both of those. So, yeah. you got. I would try to stream. I would try to network with people in the same similar communities. Um, that way you can, you know, you're all you're all part of the, you know, you're you have the same, um, how much do we call it? Same area of focus, you know, whether it's Tarkov, whether it's like whether it's the economy in Tarkov, something like that, then you can kind of build that relationship off of. If I go to a Fortnite streamer and I'm like, hey, yeah, I I, I moderate in, in, in Tarkov, and they go, a lot of most like, what the hell is Tarkov? <laughs> you know, oh, <laughs> that's it's true. I've actually witnessed that. People have like, oh, like, I watch all different kinds of streams, and it's like some people don't know these other games exist, and that that's just the reality, right? Uh, in terms of tools, man, I love the follow age tool of a uh, uh, like. Twitch added the uh, account create. You can see when an account was created. Man, I love that tool. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is such a valuable tool because you can see, you know, if someone's been there for ten years, okay, so they've been here around ten years. Or if you can see when someone made a brand new account just to harass the streamer, it's like, well, this is an easy one. So I would definitely look at the uh, wh and wh how long the person's been following and stuff like that. You can then you can kind of gauge if they're, you know, whether they're here to troll, whether they're here to be, you know uh sincere about something you can get you you can kind of gauge you know you want to obviously newer streamers newer uh twitch accounts are are of, of course created but the majority of twitch accounts that i've seen while moderating are all not just created they're all been there for years or they've been there other than the botting that you, we've alluded to multiple times so i do like that tool uh, and I I do agree. Always I like having the chat up. That's a great tool. Uh, also timestamps. Uh, I really really love timestamps. Um, to get a gauge of when a conversation started, how long the conversation has been going on. You know, if there's a if there's a real seedy conversation going on, or it's, it's getting on longer and longer. For the most part, you kind of go okay. It's you know you look in chat. Okay, this conversation is going half an hour, twenty five minutes. All right, guys. You know it's time to stop this conversation. You know as a moderator, it's like okay, we kind of should. You know, focus on something else now. So it, the timestamp gives you an idea of how long something's been going on for, so you can kind of make a judgment call sometimes and like, okay, this this needs to end now. So those mm -hmm. are the tools I like to use. I agree with you completely. Um, whenever I have any update to my browsers or anything or clear my history, one of the first things I do on Twitch, just as a user, is I turn on timestamps. It helps me to know. You know, there are times where I will go AFK and I'll come back. 
and I'll then answer a question that's in chat because it's the last thing someone said and no one's answered yet, thinking I'm helping. And I had no idea that it was asked 15 minutes ago and answered by the streamer 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and everyone in chat is, uh, you know, including the streamers, like, what are you talking? Wait, oh, that's right. We were talking about that a half hour ago. What are you talking about? So timestamps really help. Um, in terms of complete vanilla Twitch, um, the tools that mod that Twitch give you are actually pretty good, but you have to take some time to learn them. Um, you can actually make mod tools be visible in chat. Um, you know, where you have your uh, delete message button and your ban button and your timeout button. And th those are helpful, although you got to be careful if you don't know what you're doing and you press it when you don't mean to for the wrong person. Pausing chat with the alt key um, is very helpful if you want to look into how to do that. That stopping the auto scroll of chat really made uh, the mod tools viable there. But also mod view. Mod view um once they did come out with that, I felt like that made modding a heck of a lot easier for me. Uh, it is completely customizable. You can choose what is there. And once you have it set up in a way that you prefer and that helps you with the content and uh, environment that you're dealing with, it really can make modding much easier. Um, and in terms of, you talked about, um, Rhett had talked about account age, um, whether you're using better Twitch TV or Frank or Z or um, I don't know about 7TV, but I know those other two, they have plugins where you can actually have new users be highlighted. And yes. it's incredibly helpful. I use that all the time as a modder where I, I choose the age. You can actually set it. Is it only one hour old that you want to be highlighted or up to a month old or however long you want? I usually do about a week um, or four days. And they're highlighted. And that way I know this person's new to tr Twitch. Or they could very well be a ban evader um, or, or just a, a fake account because someone's trying to continue to agree, you know, um, add into the conversation with their buddy, but they don't want to use their normal account. Um, there's also a repeat messages plugin, which really helps. So you can find out who's been spamming the same thing over and over again. You can quickly find out who's... Uh, either a bot or or just you know uh bear to grief um it'll give you an on-screen counter of how many times they've said certain things that's really helpful and you can also set up audio alerts through them for specific words which are used in chat whether it's your name the streamer's name or other topics you know that are going on that'll draw your attention back to chat i think they're both helpful for modding and for the streamer um those audio alerts it'll let you know when someone's saying your name um, it'll let you know if someone's bringing up a current public event or, you know, current events that are of, of the conversation. Maybe we don't want that to be discussed and it'll bring your attention to it. And the last thing, uh, Van touched on it was the Google Translate plugin or, or other Translate plugins, but I use Google Translate where you can actually change the whole screen, but you can also highlight just a sentence and right click on it and translate that. That really made, a. I had a, a stint of modding for BSG and I modded for a few other people where, yeah, okay, you have your language being restricted. So you're just going to put your command, hey, English only, and you're going to delete the message. But I often take it a step further and actually translate what they did say anyway. And yeah, I can quickly find out if they need to be explained and told or if you just need to ban them because a lot of times they're going to be saying harassing and TOS things, but in another language. And if they are, just ban them. Uh, especially if it's TOS, um, don't let them evade the rules just because they're using another language. But there are people that really do, I mean, especially depending on what game you're playing. You know, you may have people from other countries and other languages just be interested in your channel. So you don't have to just ban them for using another language. Time them out, give them a warning. But then I translate to find out what they did say. And so those, all those tools um, are all very helpful. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about BTTV because that's uh, all. Just go through there and and play with those tools. If you're if you're a new mod, if you're an old mod, if you whether you've used it or not, I went back in there probably about a month ago. I hadn't touched it in about a year, and uh, there's new tools in there to play with. So totally worth going through every now and then. Even the tools that you're familiar with and that you've set up a certain way, go back and look. You know every few months or whatever and see if they've added something new that might help you. Well, awesome. Thank you, by the way, for giving me that just split moment break there. I appreciate it. Um, we are going to wrap up this whole thing. And usually what I do is when I'm interviewing streamers is I ask them if you could go back and tell yourself 
three things when you first started streaming, what would they be and why? But I'm going to ask you gentlemen that question. You get to go back and tell yourself three things when you first became a mod. What are they and why? I assume that they're going to be something along the lines of some of these tools that you've used and whatnot, but I'm sure that there's some some other things that you would tell yourself. I would say these three things to myself. This is supposed to be fun, so don't be so serious. The streamer trusted you to help their help them with their channel, so you better take this serious. And don't feed the trolls, but not everyone is trolling. And sometimes people are just awkward. Okay. <laughs> I love it. True. That's true. Never know. What about you, Rhett? Oh, making me feel really old thinking back about a long time ago. <laughs> um, you know, being a moderator is a very, people underestimate, it, it's a very special thing. Um, you know, having, you know, being, I will say, being in, in the Phantom Lord's channel and being, you know, a, a mod and then getting, you know, a, a mod in Inkerparin, I, w I wish as a moderator when I first got the sword, uh, I made some mistakes. I wish that I took it as an honor and a privilege rather than a right. And I will say that it is as a, as a streamer or as a sorry as a moderator in this case, it's 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 not a it's not a right that you're a moderator. It's a privilege. And if you're privileged to do it, treat it as such. And I, I you know I I made a couple of mistakes when I was the first mod, but um, yeah, treat just treat it that way. Um. Another one I would say, uh, it, have fun. Don't take it as a job. You know, it's it's not a job. Most moderators that I know are not paid, so you're not being paid for it. Take it as a, take it as you know, it it's it's just an everyday life. Don't take it as super seriously. Like be serious, but don't treat it as it's the end all to be all. Um, and number three, I think. Uh, one thing I will say is, as a moderator, don't always focus on that one channel. You know, just because you moderate that channel. You don't have to stay focused on that one channel. Um, all, you can go out and experience other channels. You know, the, the other the streamer is not going to hate you. Oh, you know, I why, why were you here? I said, well, you know, I was. No streamer says that, right? So, go out and enjoy other channels, have fun, um, and don't don't be all don't be stressed out. You know, if if you know you miss your moderator's uh, stream, I was very. That was terrible if I missed Phantom Lord's stream. I felt like a, the worst person on the planet. I don't know why, just... But if you miss a stream, you know, it's not the end of the world. And uh, most streamers that I know will be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Hope everything's okay. But that's literally how it, it, what it boils down to. So just have fun with it. And just, you know, understand that, you know, it, it's a privilege. Van, what would you tell yourself? <laughs> Oh Lord! Um, oh no! I heard Sigma's voice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've drug it tailed off. <laughs> I, I've drug uh, you know Van along this journey with me, and it's some some days it's been bumpy, and some weeks have been bumpy, and and other times have been absolutely wonderful. So, uh, my my mods have like you said, like it's it's a privilege, like they've celebrated the highs and the lows with me. But I giggle because. Van always has a very like dry way that he looks at things. It always makes me laugh. Yep. Yep. It's uh, the highs are great. Um, Cause then you can celebrate, you know, the success of whatever, you know, you and the streamer and all the other people on the team. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things people don't understand it. What it takes, it truly does take a village to, to make a stream. Um, you know, it's not just a streamer. It's not just the mods. It's not just the, you know, the graphic designers or the, you know, the, the sponsors or anybody like that. It takes everybody. So, yeah, it's very cool to to be part of that journey. So as a mod, um, understand that it is a journey and you're on it and you're not running it, but you're responsible for it. Um if I had to go back and tell myself three things, I would say, uh, yeah, they gave you a sword, but it's not about swinging the sword. So it's like 5% of the job. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that you will have to do that, you know, 
some of it you're going to like and some of it you're going to hate and <clears throat> you're going to disagree with people and you're going to fight with people and it's going to be it's going to be great all of that at the end of the day is going to amount to something that is really amazing to see um that you don't even know you you can't even i couldn't when i started modding i could not i i could not conceptualize the the you know all of the stuff that i would have done as a mod um helping the various streamers that i mod for do what they do and i would say so i was i was when i got first got started i was very the opposite of what Rhett just said um, as far as i was focused on one stream that was my stream i was the mod for that stream you know there may be other streams but this one is mine um not that i was like you know proclaiming ownership but like i focused 100 percent on that stream and you gain value for that stream. Even if you feel that way about that stream, you, you gain value by going out and looking at other streams. You know, what are, what are, what are these other people doing that maybe, you know, your streamer could benefit from, you know, not stealing their stuff, but doing things the same way, or maybe doing things differently. Maybe you saw something you're like, Oh my God, please just never do this. You know, all of that is value added. Um, because the, the streamer has a perspective and they know what they want. They know what the goal is, but none of you on the team know how to get there. You're all figuring it out as you go. And that's fine. Uh, that's why, that's why you've decided to listen to this podcast. You know, you're trying to figure stuff out and you're trying to learn from other people who have done it and that's great. And you're going to do things differently than Sigma's done it. And, and Pestley and all of the other streamers out there. All the other streamers that we mod for, you're going to do your, you know, your, your streamer is going to do things differently than all of the people that we have modded for and that we have watched. And that's fine. That's exactly what this whole thing's about. Um, but you can still gain some, some, some goodness by going out and looking at other streams and getting good ideas and bringing them back. <clears throat> um, but I, I think the biggest thing would probably be and other people have, have, have these, both these guys have said the same thing, but have fun because this is a business, but it's not your job. We talked about the, the, um, you know, the disparity between the biggest streamers and the lowest streamers. Well, there's a bigger disparity between any streamer and the mods. As far as income goes, we don't get paid. So, um, it's a business and you should act in a business like manner but you're not getting paid to be there. So if life comes up, don't drop life to be a mod on a stream. You know, your streamer will, will understand. And if they don't, then they're not, they're not worthy of your time. So take care of you so that you can take care of the streamer. And that includes getting, you know, if you had a big event coming up, get some sleep, eat right, you know, do all of the things that you would normally do as a human being, because if you're not doing those things, you're not going to be a good mod. You know, like Brian was saying, get showered. You know, if you have a 24 hour event, a subathon, a drops event, a whatever, get showered, get dressed, you know, get comfortable, get your snacks and get ready to do your job. Well, not your job, get ready to do a job. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a business, but it's not your job, I think would be an important thing to, to know and just have fun because if you're not having fun, then that's going to reflect on the stream. Everything that you do, that you feel that all, all of that stuff is going to be reflected in the stream, whether directly or indirectly. So if you're not having fun, take a break, whether it's a, a break for an hour or a break for a week, take a break until you're, you're ready to be a mod that that stream deserves. So yeah, that, that, that's probably what I would tell myself. Very true. I, I like that all three of you mentioned having fun because a lot of times if you guys are having fun, the chat is having fun. And if the chat is having fun, the streamer is having fun, like you guys do uh, cause a big ripple effect throughout the stream. So, and also just knowing that as a streamer, knowing that your community is in good hands 
is a huge weight off of the shoulders because a lot of you guys also mod in the discord and i know if some shit goes down you guys have it and i know that other streamers feel that way so um yeah you guys play a big role i i hope that if you're listening to this as a moderator or somebody that's just coming into modding that you take what these gentlemen have said have has said have said dan english have said have said thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh seriously that you've taken notes check out all of the links like i said i'll make sure that those are all down below come join the streamer class discord uh i am a very vi busy person but this is something that I don't want to put on the back burner streamer class itself. I want to help you guys. There's tons of people in the community that want to help. I reached out on Twitter. I asked for uh, mod suggestions for anybody that wanted to either be interviewed or that we should interview. And I got a huge response. I got a lot of DMs about it. There are so many people out in the community that want to help and they want to answer questions. To wrap this up, I am going to have every one of these guys' Twitters down below and their Twitch channel too, because like Van, excuse me, I can word, Van streams as well. So I'll make sure that all of their links are down below. You can go follow them. I know that none of them would be against getting a question here and there. If you see them in a chat, say hi. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to wrap it up for us. I did not expect it to go this long. So Thank you guys. I know that you have lives to live and it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon or morning like it is for you, Brett. Um, you got yeah, things to do. <laughs> but thank you guys for being here. Um, yeah, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all the things that YouTube people do out there. And uh, any closing thoughts from you guys? Um. Yeah. Um streaming life is not life life there's the life outside streaming have fun in both you get you get the privilege of having fun in both so have fun in both yeah go enjoy, touch, enjoy I, the ride i think he just told us to go touch grass i think uh touching grass uh that would be interesting <laughs> yeah I actually i golf and uh, oddly enough i have a major in english so when you said uh english much i was like "Ooh, can i chime in <laughs> i legitimately have five years of university trained english oh good my you can watch yes. my channel in your aisle twitch it'll be great yeah. Oh, good. Oh, 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 my brain. My brain. <laughs> oh, good. I ah, just have fun with this. And I, uh, one thing I will say is appreciate you uh, considering me for this uh, podcast. Uh, I will be, I, I'm not going to lie if I would say that I, I have looked at pretty much every, both the streaming class Discord and your Discord. And I, I love both. So I, I, I give my stamp of approval. Thank you. Thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. that. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be possible without the mods? <clears throat> Yeah. Not a chance. <laughs> I was flattered to be in, included in this, and I appreciate you uh, taking the time and thinking out some good questions and giving us a forum to, to you know, work off of each other and brainstorm some answers here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Van? Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an honor to have been nominated. Um, so, uh, it, I'll be I'll be interested to see you know in in future iterations what the uh, what other mods might have that you know for ideas or answers to these similar questions uh, as the ones that you asked today, just because it's good to you know I, I I like to have all the answers. It's part of my you know my A type lawyer brain, but uh, I'm willing to concede that every now and again, at a rare moment, I might not have all of them. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we got such a good response from this that I think this will end up being like a, a two or three part series that, you know, maybe down the road will also be revisited by other mods. So I look forward to it for sure. Um, okay, gentlemen, I'm I'm going to wrap this up. So again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Good luck out there. Thank you for listening to another episode of Streamer Class. Links to everything discussed in today's episode can be found in the description. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information or to connect with Sigma, follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Discord. We'll see you next time.